Hello, everyone. I am Zhao Chuan. Today, let's get to know Hi the Cynoceratops. Cynoceratops was the only advanced ceratopsian discovered in Asia. I loved dinosaurs since I was a little kid. At the time, I have known that there were all kinds of dinosaurs in China, but no late ceratopsians. The ceratopsians previously found in China were either small-sized, bipedal ones, such as Cytocosaurus or Hongshinosaurus, or large ones such as Protoceratops or Maginostris, but none of them had horns. The discovery of Cynoceratops broke this perception. Cynoceratops was a strange-looked ceratopsian. Even in North America, where numerous fossils of ceratopsians have been collected, not a single one looked the same as Cynoceratops. First, it looked like a typical centrosaurine, which did not have long brow horns, but many ornaments on the head frill. Second, its face was relatively short and round. We know this part well as the fossils of Cynoceratops are mainly about its head. Although some remains of other parts are also preserved, they are relatively fragmentary. There are three specimens of Cynoceratops skull collected so far, which might belong to two or three individuals. One specimen is a partial skull consisting of the front of the nose and part of the eyes, which shows us there was a horn in this position. Another specimen presents the rear of the head frill, which is the squamosal part, and the partial nose and eyes. The mentioned two specimens have preserved the same part, indicating that they come from two individuals. The other piece is the first collected skull specimen, which preserves the margin of the head frill. Around 2006, people began to excavate the fossil sites in Zhuking on a large scale. China Central Television telecasted the whole process live. In that large-scale excavation, people found this very famous specimen, which represents a series of spikes around the margin of the head frill, the parietal part. At the time, scientists did not believe that there are late ceratopsids existed in China. So when they first saw this fossil, they thought it might belong to an ankylosaur. By observing the margin of the head frill, scientists speculated might be a part of the pelvis of Ankylus, as Pinacosaurus had a series of similar structures on its pelvis, and fossils of Pinacosaurus have been found in Shangdun province before. But along with excavation and clearing, people found it was not the pelvis, but the parietal of a ceratopsian, that is the part on the top of the head frill. Cynoceratops had many distinctive features. It had a nasal horn, but unlike most ceratopsians had their nasal horn, located close to the front of the mouth, the nasal horn of Cynoceratops was situated in the middle and rather rearward, being distanced from the front of the mouth. Besides, its nasal horn was thin and blade-shaped, similar to those of many ceratopsians. Generally, the snout of ceratopsians with nasal horns was relatively narrow. For example, Triceratops had a nasal horn and its snout was narrow. The same was true for Styracosaurus. However, the part of Cynoceratops, where the nasal horn grew, resembling that of Pachyhenosaurus, had a platform bulging outward to the sides. If viewed from the front, its lower part had many bumps, which formed a somewhat wide platform. On the bumps on both sides, there were many folds. When it was alive, these folds might be covered by various sized scales, which spliced together like that of the tortoiseshell, and formed the shape of its nasal cavity. The bone of Cynoceratops eyes was preserved well. It had a swim ring-like structure surrounding its eyes. Resembling many ceratopsians, this structure was low, not as prominent as that of Triceratops. And above its eyes, there were no small horns, either. On many ceratopsians, especially centrosaurines, such as on many different centrosaurus individuals, small horns, and developed horns, or bumps were found above their eyes. But Cynoceratops was not the same. The part above its eyes was quite smooth. So when we did the restoration, we made it like what the model shows. There are relatively large scales around the eye socket to provide protection, but no sign of the brow horns. Besides, let us talk about the ornaments on its head frill, which we simply call sharp horns or spikes. These structures of Cynoceratops were very characteristic. We know that the head frill of Ceratopsians consisted of two parts, the squamosal at the lower part, and the parietal on top. 
Cynoceratops had a conspicuous forward curving sharp horns on the margin of the parietal. This hook-like structure was commonly seen among Centrosaurines. Centrosaurus had two in the front middle of the head frill, but the general Centrosaurines had fewer horn-like forward curving processes than Cynoceratops had. This structure was first found on Cynoceratops. Although the later found Cosmoceratops also had a similar structure, their horn-like processes greatly drooped downward. Those of Cynoceratops were just forward curving. Of course, this might be caused by the preservation state of the remains. As moving downwards, these spikes became smaller. On the squamosal, three sharp spikes have persevered. The one on the top suddenly became very large. About this spike, there are disputes. Some scholars believe that it may be the deformed margin of the squamosal. This tip is not a spike, but it should be placed vertically to connect with the squamosal to form a smooth margin. About this theory, we have reservations. Such a structure was not unique to Cynoceratops among Ceratopsians. The later discovered Xenoceratops had some relatively large bulge spikes at the same position, and some specimens of Styracosaurus also show some developed spike-like structures here. The above is about the reconstruction of the head of Cynoceratops. The fossil materials of the body of Cynoceratops are not so much, but we can still infer the approximate appearance of its body based on its skull, it had a typical trunk of Ceratopsians, with a broad back and wide pelvis and walked on for limbs. It had five toes on each forelimb, among which the two degenerated ones on the lateral side had no toenails. Its hind limbs had four toes, three of which were used for load bearing, and the inner one only simply touched on the ground. As for the scales of Cynoceratops, we know nothing about them but many skin fossils of other Ceratopsians can be used for reference. For example, the skin fossils of Centrosaurus and Chasmosaurus represent delicate and tiny scales, while Triceratops had large scales on its body. When we reconstructed the Cynoceratops, we made the scales of intermediate size, in between those of Centrosaurus and those of Triceratops. The scales on its trunk were relatively smaller and polygonal, and the ones on its abdomen were band-like, resembling the crocodiles. Good, the above concludes our introduction to HE the Cynoceratops. Thank you all.